Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today I thought I would make a video talking a bit about George Eliot and why she is really not for me. <laughs> So I don't really know what I'm going to be saying in this video, I haven't planned out what I'm going to say, but I just wanted to talk a bit about George Eliot as an author and the fact that I don't think I'm going to be reading any more George Eliot. George Eliot is one of the most famous novelists of the Victorian period, she is a lot of people's favourite novelists, and I don't really like her books. And I feel like I ought to like her books, partly I think just because she's a well-known Victorian novelist, and partly because I often quite like the themes and the plots of her books. There are several television adaptations of her books that I liked a lot more than the actual books, but there's just something about her writing and something about her pacing that jars with me and that I don't enjoy and I wanted to discuss that a little bit today, especially because she's probably the author I've read the most of that I don't really like. I've read five of her books and for an author who only wrote seven novels, like I've read quite a lot of her bibliography and I think I've kept persisting because I felt like I ought to like George Eliot and that if I read more George Eliot I just might like her more, but that hasn't really happened and I think it's finally time to say goodbye to George Eliot and not to read anything more by her. The first George Eliot book I ever read was Middlemarch which I read when I was about 14 and didn't really enjoy. I had seen the TV adaptation before then and loved it and then I read the book and it was quite boring and quite disappointing and she seemed to stick with all of the wrong characters and not write about the characters I wanted to hear about and I wasn't emotionally invested and I didn't enjoy her writing. I then read Silas Marner which I didn't really enjoy and I don't remember anything about whatsoever. I have completely, entirely forgotten that book. And then I left it many, many years, and it was only last year that I read Daniel Deronda, which again, I had seen a television adaptation of that I loved, and so I thought I would give it a chance. And I read Daniel Deronda, and I quite enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And again, like with Middlemarch, I found that she was spending time with the wrong characters, and I didn't care about Gwendolyn. I wanted to read about Daniel and Mira, and I always seemed to be with Gwendolyn. This year, I have read quite a lot of George Eliot. I read Adam Bede earlier this year, which I didn't really like. There were parts of it I thought were gripping and impressive but for the most part I found the pacing odd, I didn't like the ending, and again I found that George Eliot was spending time with the characters I didn't care about. I liked Seth, Adam's brother, but I didn't really have much interest in Adam himself, and I didn't really understand what she was trying to say. I then reread Middlemarch, which I enjoyed much more than I did the first time and I got a lot more out of it. I still didn't completely adore it, but I liked it and I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads and I would say that overall Middlemarch is my favourite George Eliot book, even though it took me a second reading to actually appreciate it and enjoy it more and I still like the television adaptation more than the book. And then during October I read Milne Floss, which I really didn't like. It's one of my least favourite Victorian books I've ever read. I had seen a film beforehand which I didn't like, so I kind of knew I wouldn't really like the plot, but I thought I would give it a chance. I had DNF'd it once before when I was sort of 18, 19, and I thought it would be good to give the book another chance, especially because it was one of the most famous Victorian books that I hadn't yet read, and I just really didn't like it. I found the first half very, very slow and very boring. I found the pace really odd, and it seemed to take a very long time for the children to grow up into adults, which they are by the second half of the book. Maggie has a lot of aunts, and I didn't really know who was who and what was going on, and I found the language quite boring. The second half of the book I enjoyed much more and found quite gripping, but then the last sort of 20 pages, the ending of The Mill and the Floss, I just hated. I just thought it was terrible, and I knew what was coming because I had seen the film and I knew how the story ended, but I was kind of hoping that maybe the film had like made up that ending and changed it a lot, and that actually in the book it would be much better, and it wasn't, and it really angered me, and I really didn't like it. Um, so I think I'm done with George Eliot, which is a shame because. I'd quite like to make another author week on my channel because I really enjoy doing them, but there are no more classic authors now that I'm close to reading all of by. I'd like to do one on Anthony Trollope or George Gissing, but I have books and books and books to read by them. George Eliot, I've read five out of her seven books, but I haven't enjoyed them, so an author week of George Eliot would basically me being complaining every day that she spends time with the wrong characters and that I find her prose quite dry, um, which is not really what anyone wants. She does have two other books, Felix Holt the Radical and Romola, I don't think I will be reading them. I think I have decided that George Eliot is not for me and that I've given her a fair try and now I should just leave it. I'm curious to know what, what people think of Felix Holt and Romola who have read them, especially if they're very different in style to the others. For example, if one of them was first person, I would probably give it a try because the other five books I've read by George Eliot are all in third person, unless I've completely forgotten Silas Marner, it is possible. And I think if one of them was in first person I might give it a try because it might be quite different. I don't imagine they are though, knowing George Eliot, so I think I will probably be leaving them to be. So I wanted to talk about why I don't like George Eliot, um, and also why I think that other people might, because I can understand that it's quite a personal preference and it's to do with personal taste that I really don't enjoy her books. Partly I think it's just to do with her prose style. Because there are some things in George Eliot that I do admire and I do like, 
Sometimes she writes beautifully. There are passages and scenes of hers which I have thoroughly enjoyed. Some of the scenes between Dorothea and Ladislaw in Middlemarch are beautiful. The relationship between Fred and Mary in Middlemarch is done so well. At one point in The Milner Floss, Philip writes Maggie a letter and it's one of the most beautiful things I've read. There are moments in all of her books that I've read that I've been like, yeah, this is amazing. But they're so few and far between for me and they tend to be in dialogue or in letters, not in her prose. And I do find many of her themes very interesting. I think she's a very interesting writer in terms of looking at communities and how small towns work, how social interactions work. She's a very, very much a realist writer and she writes from observation. I think if you're interested in knowing what the Victorian period was like, her novels are brilliant. And I find them really interesting to kind of study, I suppose, in a way, even if I don't enjoy them. For example, um, as I've mentioned before on this channel, I'm currently writing a historical novel that's set in a small town in the Victorian period. Middlemarch was really, really useful for that because it has so much detail in. And I do appreciate and can admire the realism of her writing. She's very interesting in looking at gender and the position of women within Victorian society, especially in The Mill and the Floss, and this was the thing I found the most compelling about The Mill and the Floss. And she does at times write impressive, interesting love stories. She's also interesting, I think, at exploring themes that are sometimes a little bit neglected within Victorian novels and feel a little bit more unique. For example, Daniel Deronda is really interesting in terms of looking at the position of Jewish people within the Victorian period, and The Mill and the Floss presents quite an interesting portrait of a character with a deformity and the prejudices and persecution almost that Philip gets in life because of his appearance. I think Middlemarch is a fascinating book in terms of being like a state of the nation book in terms of exploring a world on the cusp of what comes before the Victorian period and the Victorian period. Middlemarch is set in 1832, it is a bit before the Victorian period, but it's so almost Victorian and what is exploring in many ways is how how society in the 19th century is becoming Victorian and that is fascinating and I can really admire that and think it's awesome but also I just don't like her books and I think there are a few things in play here one I find her pacing very odd and I think that's partly for me because I enjoy a good very plot driven book and sometimes George Eliot is a bit too philosophical and analytical for me and I just want more dialogue and or love scenes and or crime I enjoy character development but I like it to be done in dialogue and action I find her pacing in general quite strange and she has a habit in her books that have multiple characters of staying for a big chunk of time for several chapters with one character and then moving to another character for many many chapters rather than doing like different characters every chapter like someone like Dickens or Trollope does and I much prefer different characters every chapter rather than big chunks at a time this is the thing I found in both Daniel Deronda and Middlemarch and I find in general her pacing quite odd for me in general when I've been reading George Eliot books between like halfway through and maybe like 90% of the way through is the bit I enjoy with all of the books I've read by her apart from potentially Silas Marner because I don't remember it, I found the first half quite slow and a pain to get through and then I sped through the second half but then I didn't really I love the ending. Middlemarch and Daniel Deronda, which are probably my favourite two George Eliots, I did quite like the ending, but with both Adam Bede and Mill and the Floss, I didn't like the first half, much more enjoyed the second half, and then found the ending a real letdown. The pacing then is one issue, and the other I think is mostly just her writing and the fact that I don't enjoy her prose. I like her dialogue. In scenes that are mostly dialogue, I enjoy George Eliot's writing, and I think her dialogue is, tends to be very, very strong and tends to get across her characters well, but I find her prose quite dull and quite boring and quite analytical, and I think that's partly because it lacks humour and humour is something I really really value in Victorian literature that's one of the reasons why I love Dickens so much and why he is my favourite author is that balance he has of the humour and the sadness the humour and the more serious subjects and for me George Eliot is all seriousness there is rarely a moment of lightness or humour in her work and every now and then like twice in a book there'll be a sentence of wit and I'll laugh and be really surprised but it's not often for me and that might be partly because I don't necessarily get her sense of humour I think there is sometimes a wry wit that goes slightly over my head or like round my shoulder I don't know but because her writing isn't funny and because for me it isn't beautiful it's just kind of prosy that means I don't really get that much out of it partly as well I think this is to do with the fact that I'm not really fussed about descriptions of landscape I buddy read The Mill and the Floss with several other booktubers Kate Howe and Marissa from Blakely Bookish were talking about George Eliot's beautiful descriptions of the landscape and they, they didn't really do anything for me. I'm not a big fan of landscape writing. I'm not really interested in physical descriptions in books, partly because I don't have a visual imagination at all. So you could like paint me in words, the most vivid picture, and I would never be able to imagine it or really have any clue what that would look like. Cause I just, my brain doesn't work like that. I'm one of those weird people who loves Thomas Hardy, but has no interest in like his descriptions of landscape. The thing I like about Thomas Hardy and landscape is the way he talks about how landscape affects people, not about the way he talks about landscape. So George Eliot's landscape 
type writing or writing about setting doesn't move me at all and her writing about character I generally find a bit flat and I just find her prose quite boring and I think it's because it was highbrow in the Victorian period and I don't really like Victorian highbrow. I found the same in fact with um, William Makepeace Thackeray who was another highbrow of the Victorian period. I've only read Vanity Fair which I did quite enjoy but I didn't love it. I've never been moved to read anything else by him. I might at some point in the future because he's a well-known Victorian author but Vanity Fair was fine. I probably enjoyed the film slightly more than I read the book and it's because it's too Victorian highbrow and I don't want the Victorian highbrow prosy writers when I could read the glorious humour and wit of Dickens when I could read the small everyday detail of Gaskell and when I could read the gripping adventurous work of Wilkie Collins or the love triangles and quartets of Hardy. Like, George Eliot's writing is not beautiful for me, it's just a little bit dull. I don't mean to be like hating on George Eliot, I'm trying to explain why I don't like George Eliot and why I won't read anything more by her because I feel like I ought to defend myself because I know she's such a popular Victorian novelist and I know so many people love her and I feel like as a great advocate of Victorian literature and as a great like admirer of the Victorian period I ought to like George Eliot more than I do and yet no we don't get on we don't get on it's weird because I've come to see Victorian literature as a kind of genre which it isn't because there are so many different genres within Victorian literature so many different kind of Victorian books Victorian literature is such a expansive and various thing that I can't possibly expect to like all Victorian literature I read. There is a good chance if I read a Victorian novel I will like it more than any other novel because I know that I'm really interested in the period and that's like one thing I can guarantee if a book was written and set in the Victorian period I will find at least one thing interesting about it because the Victorian period interests me historically. But that doesn't mean I'm going to like all Victorian literature because not all Victorian literature is the same and the writing style of George Eliot is incredibly different to the writing style of Dickens or Gaskell or Hardy or Wilkie Collins or Geraldine Dewsbury or George Gissing or all of these other authors that I adore and George Eliot is just, she's not for me and that's okay. And that's all I really wanted to say today. I hope this hasn't been too rambly. I wanted to like rant a bit because um, I didn't really like The Mill on the Floss and I was cross about it. I know George Eliot, I'm sorry. I gave you a good chance, but alas, no. George Eliot and me, we're, we're done. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Sorry for this slight ramble slash rant. Let me know in the comments what you think of George Eliot, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.